All right, so in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to make bales. So something like this. Along with that, I'm gonna show you how to do it a couple different ways. So it'll fit whatever tool setup you have or style you use. I'm also going to be offering a free template for you to use, so it makes things just a lot easier. So let's get started. So to start things off, and if you didn't already know, a bale is, it's this little thing that allows you to hang your pendants and connect it to your chain. It also allows your chain to kind of slide through it and move around. You could also make them in a ton of different sizes to fit whatever you need. So you will have options. And like I said, my template will cover all of these and a size even bigger than the biggest one. You're not gonna need everything that's up here. It's just gonna be a bunch of different options to show different ways of doing it. But the first thing you're going to need is some sort of metal. I'm going to be using some silver sheet metal. If you're new at this and you can't just make your own sheet metal like I can, or don't have access to getting a lot of it, I suggest picking up some copper sheet metal or brass sheet metal will work as well. So you have something to practice with. And because I do make a lot of my own sheets, this is a very valuable tool. It's basically just a thing that tells me what gauge my metal is. So all I have to do is take this and slide it in and it tells me that this is 19 gauge. And it's good for anything when you just have sheets of metal laying around that are unmarked. I suggest getting one of these. With that said though, you don't wanna use super thick gauge metal to make bales. I usually make them from 20 to 23 gauge depending. Anything thinner than that is a little too thin. Anything thicker than that is just a little hard to work with. But I suggest playing around with it and seeing what you like because Smaller pieces can use a smaller gauge and larger ones can use a thicker gauge. So when it comes to the template itself, you'll see I have everything laid out and the sizing all through everything. You'll also see that there are two different types, one with squared and one with pointed. These will come in handy for different things. So say you're making something that has a ring or a big space that you need to hang from, the pointed ones will work best for that because you can bend the tips of them like so and touch them together. I don't have this one finished or soldered or anything like that. I just kind of threw it on here to show for the video, but that's pretty much what you can do. And it makes it so this will hang perfectly. You could do similar things with these ones, but it doesn't work as well and it is kind of bulky. That's why I have a sharp pointed one too. So with this kind here, you can slide it onto a piece of metal and solder it down and it would be a fixed bail versus one of these that would be kind of free floating. Just as a quick example, if I tighten this up a bit, it would stick on here and I could just solder it down and you would have a piece with a bail on it. If you're not fond of the template idea and just want to kind of make them yourself, you can. It's easiest to do with a strip of metal. I'm using some sterling silver strip right here and all you really need to do is find the center point of this. So I'm just going to measure it out. It's 12 millimeters. So I will set this to six and just scribe a line and then scribe a line from the other side. And you'll see a little bit of a divergence in there because it's not gonna be perfect. So you'll know where your center point is and make your line longer than you actually need it. Also, it's best to use dividers like this to actually do all this and measure it out and use these. I use calipers basically because they're very cheap calipers and I don't mind wearing down the tips and having to replace them maybe once every couple of years. So once you have that, you need to figure out your total size. I'm gonna go for the 25 millimeter one. So I need 25. And then I just need to make that in half because that would be our folding point which is about 12.5. And I'll just scribe that in. Then all you really have to do is basically take this point and go to here and make a line and make a diamond. So there we go, we have it all lined out. And then all you have to do is cut the diamond out and you'll have your blank for your bale. So you can use a couple different things to cut this. You can use some shears if your metal is thin enough, but you're going to get some um, curling on it, which is kind of annoying when making these. And this really works better with thinner metals. You can also use a jeweler saw 
which I'm going to, and just saw along the edges and file them smooth. So here we go, we have our little diamond piece now, and that's basically how you can make them however you like for whatever you're working on. And then rest of the stuff that I'm gonna show with the templates and everything will work with this as well. But I just wanted to show that you can just measure out your own if you really want. So when it comes to the template, all you need to do is cut these out and stick them to your metal. I print mine on label paper, so I just have to cut it out, peel off the back and stick it on. So we're going to make this one right here. Just going to cut it out. You don't wanna cut directly on the lines because you want more of a surface to hold onto your piece. And if you cut directly on the lines, the saw blades can pick them up and get dust underneath and then it starts to come off and then it ruins your design. So if you have it on the edge or if you have it farther, then you're fine. Another thing I've learned is always peel this before cutting the rest of it off to make it easier to peel. So this is all I need. So I'm just gonna take some metal and put it on it. And if you're hanging out the edges, you can just fold it over or you can just cut them off and do whatever you want really. But that is now on there. If you are just using normal paper, just put some glue stick on the back of it, stick it on, put something kind of heavy and flat on it and let it sit for a little bit to make sure it adheres. And then go ahead and do the same thing we're about to do. So I'm just gonna take my saw and cut it out just like I did with the one I drew. And then I'm going to do one real quick after this showing how to use shears to just cut it. So there we go. We have our other little diamond bale all sawed out. That took about a minute of sawing to do. So if you're not the best with sawing, there's always the shears that you can use. And it's pretty simple to use them. You literally just cut it out like you would paper, but try to do straight lines. So you can get clean cuts like that with little to no effort. You're gonna wanna make sure to do this on a littler piece of metal so you're not cutting through a big sheet just to cut this out. So there we go. But you'll notice that it has a nice little bend to it now from using the shears. So you can flatten this back out, but because we are curving these, and if it's not too bad of a warping to it, like you can see that it's kind of twisted here. So you might want to just flatten it out for peace of mind, but we can move on now. And we need to remove the template paper. So to get the template paper off, all you need are some tweezers and just pick up an edge and kind of just push it down and peel it off. So a much funner way and sometimes quicker is to just burn it off. And we also need to anneal these, so it kind of takes the fuss out of trying to remove it. So I'm going to burn off the paper and anneal these at the same time. And put them directly into some pickling solution to make sure that they're all cleaned off. So with them all annealed and everything, you can try to flatten them out using a rawhide mallet so you don't leave any marks on them and some sort of steel block or something like this. Just kind of tap them down and try not to hit your finger because I have done that quite a few times and it's not pleasant. It doesn't need to be perfectly flat, you just want to make it even. So if you do have to end up hammering it like that to flatten it out, you're going to have to anneal it again because it will work harder in the piece and we need to bend it. So make sure to do that. All right, so once we get these to our liking, you want to clean up the edges before we fold them. And you could do that just with a normal file and just go over your edges to clean them up from any saw marks or any type of weird little burrs or anything. And you'll see as you're going the low spots and high spots and you want it to be all uniform. So now that they're all cleaned up and everything, we can start turning them into the actual bale shape like this. So to do that, you're gonna need something round to put them on to get this initial shape here and so it doesn't just fold in half. So you can use some needle nose pliers like this. You can use some pliers like this that are fully round. 
or you can just use a rod that is the right size. So let me do it with the needle nose pliers first. So you just want to take it and put the center into your pliers. And it might be a little too hard for your fingers to bend it, but you can take your pliers and put them against your bench pin or table or anything and turn. And it will bend it. And do it the other way too. And you can just keep rolling it and pressing it into place. So it'll end up something like this. You might have a little bit of a odd shape depending on how you bend it. See how it's not perfect. But you can use this as is and use the flat side on the back and the more bowed end on the front. Or you can just hold this again and just kind of bend it to your liking. If you want to move this around anymore, make sure to use some non-marring pliers to do so, so you don't make a bunch of marks all over it. So there we go. You could fiddle around with it to do that. And make sure both your points are going to contact one another. If not, you can grab them and move them up and down until they line up. One thing you might notice on this though, is it has little kind of sharp points where the um, points of the diamond were on the outside you can file these down. So there we go. That should take that little bit off. And you can keep going at it to your liking to what you're going for. So there you go. That is the very basic bale. And you do the same exact thing for both of these. This one might be a little too big, to be honest, but we'll see once I fold it. And by too big, I mean across. So like if I wanted to use these, I could change the sizing to whatever I'd like. So here's the square one without doing any type of cleanup to it. So here's the bigger one. And it actually looks pretty nice like this. And it has some really prominent points on the outside, which I actually kind of like with it. So this one I would just keep as is. So if you wanted to, you could use these bristle brushes to clean them up and polish them a little bit. So there we go. It's just quickly polished up. It still needs actual polishing compound used on it, but it is totally usable now. Just keep in mind that you have to clip this onto something and then solder that together. So you do still have to solder this. So as you can tell, these are pretty basic, but you can add flair to them by either using a textured metal to make them. So they'll have texture throughout them. You can solder on different little pieces you can use a saw to cut in some lines, or you can use a file to accentuate the lines and give them a different shape. I'll do that to one of these real quick. So now I'm just going to use a jeweler saw to cut some lines into this and then use a file to cut them down and make some angles in there. But before I do that, I have to talk about the sponsor of this video. This video is brought to you by Ridge Wallet. I'm sure by now you've seen these around, but if you haven't, they make lightweight, sleek, industrial wallets. And these are not your traditional bulky folding wallets, and they're meant to help your whole pocket situation. I was actually using a leather trifold wallet before, and it was just super thick and uncomfortable to sit on. That being said, Ridge wallets were actually designed to fit in your front pocket, even though I still use it in my back pocket, and I can't even feel it's there half the time. It really did help me cut out all the clutter and only carry what I really need on me. You can fit up to 12 cards in this with extra cash. I even overstuffed this and put 15 cards in it just to see what it can hold. So I obviously have a carbon fiber one. They also have a burnt titanium along with 30 other colors and different materials. And everyone comes with a lifetime warranty and you can try one out for 45 days and send it back for a full refund if you don't like it. You can get one today with free worldwide shipping and save 10% if you go to ridgewallet.com slash go meow and use code GOMEOW at checkout. So thank you, Ridge, for sending this out to me and supporting my channel. Okay, so I'm gonna start at the top and make sure not to go all the way through this. So here we go. After it being just cleaned up real quick with my um, flex shaft and that same rotary tool I was using before, and that's pretty much how it came out. But yeah, it's very simple how you can do that, but you can play around with it and try different things. You could also engrave these if you wanted to, 
if you happen to have an engraver to do so. So as you can see, it's pretty simple to make these bales and you just need a little practice at them to get them down and make them quickly. That being said, you can download the template in my description below or in the pinned comments and it's free of charge to anyone that wants it. And if you want more templates, let me know and subscribe to my channel because I'll be putting out templates in my videos so you can just download them whenever I post a new video. I also have links to all the tools I use in my videos, so if you would like to buy any of them, you can find them there, and I get a little bit of a kickback for them that helps support the channel. If you don't mind, let me know in the comments if this was helpful and if you're going to be using my templates and what you'd like to see in future videos. Other than that, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.